Today we're playing F1 23 online until we win a race. And we're starting things off here at the British Grand Prix. We go to five red lights for five laps around Silverstone from P14 on the grid. This is going to take some climbing, but it's a good getaway for us as we do one of the Ferraris before we get to turn one. Three wides up ahead. That's never going to end well. The Williams is round and the Ferrari is re-overtaken as we got a warning for a collision that I don't even know where we made it but there we go through village it's absolute pandemonium the Haas steams in locks up the Alfa Romeo's taking the widest line ever on the right hand side and there's another car off we veer to the left to try and avoid everything we've got a warning for connection typical as we go to the inside we're going to get dive bombed on the left maybe a little bit of a ping pong between the Mercedes and the Alfa Tower yes there is through Lufthiel the Mercedes round the outside and we've ended up down in P12 but the Mercedes bins it in the ground Travel trap up to Pierre Evan now. Can we try and get one over on the Alpha Tower as he blocks off the racing line? And I don't think anyone has told him that that corner is flat out on the game. What was that lift about as we go into Magnus Beckett? He oh my god! My life flashed before my eyes there. I already thought it was game over and race over. But no, thankfully, the ghosting system actually worked as intended as we've got a Haas deciding to do a bit of lawn mowing on the right-hand side as we look to re-overtake this Ferrari that we got on lap one at this start as the other Alpha Tauri in this race is starting to ghost and just stays permanently ghosted. Very, very odd. And that's going to put me off into village as I really did not know where the Ferrari was going because the ghost car was there. So apologies to the Ferrari. That one was actually a collision with you as we go through and overtake another car who's sent spinning. And all of a sudden, on lap two, we're up to P6. So, you know, with four laps to go, including this one, we might actually be on for a win. Who knows? As there's more chaos ahead as the Aston Martin goes very wide indeed and uh, both Alpha Tauris ahead of us are now ghosting and inside one another. I know that there's you know meant to be good synergy between teammates and getting to know your teammate but that seems a little bit too getting to know your teammate as they get to know each other's inside. Pause. Now looking to make the move on the Aston Martin. I can sense he's probably not going to go flat through him. Magnus Beckett's. I think some of these guys aren't used to maybe the levels of downforce we now have on the game. Little lift off and having to stick behind until we get a great one with some ERS. No DRS of course until lap three but he's harvesting with the rain light coming on for him. We used a little bit of boost and we're up into P5 and now we've now got the top four ahead of us. We can sniff a podium. Maybe be even a win in race one here. Uh, now is not the time for a friend request. I'm busy, man. So the two Alpha Tauris continue now to ghost and overtake the sister car in the Red Bull. They're now doing the pincer movement, ghosting through one another, crisscrossing lines. I really think this must be a tribute act to the fact that Alpha Tauri as a team name is departing after this year. Fair play to them. May they rest in peace. But we've overtaken both the ghosts and looking now to get the red ball but the ferrari in the lead is 3.6 seconds ahead so that is going to be a big ask but we continue to fight on to try and get p2 in the maximum the red ball breaking in the middle of that corner brake checking as i then get scared by the alpha towery geese ghosts as they continue to annoy us it's very disconcerting you just never know when they're gonna unghost and well, okay Okay, br absolutely brilliant net code on this game. That is the Red Bull just lags behind us. We're going to take it as we get up into second place. If only McLaren had that feature, they would actually do some overtakes in the race. As we get home in second place, the Ferraris in first, but it's not P1. So our journey continues. Now stepping into the famous red of the Ferrari car at the Austrian GP. We're starting P7. So we've got a great chance maybe of getting P1 here. If you look at the progress we made at Silverstone, it's a good start. Maybe a little delay because of the lag going on. Taking it nice and easy into turn one because chaos is bound to and we've been hit. And we've been hit. And that is pretty much the sum up of being in a Ferrari. That sums up Ferrari's entire season. It was going so well and then it didn't. So now we're in stone dead last. But we've got five whole laps to go. So never say never in Formula 1. We continue on. We're up into P19. Austria being a short circuit. Maybe there's going to be more chaos. Maybe more positions for us to gain. So we're going to plough on and soldier on. To see if we can do a worldly recovery from last place to first. As we get 
the Williams are now chasing after the McLaren. There's a car sideways. The Haas has, ha has met its cruel fate on the exit curb, I think, as we're up into P14. 13 now on lap three as other people keep on uh, just... Uh, absolutely failing around this is the Williams makes the re-overtake. We overtook this guy on the previous lap, but he's got us back. And the McLaren ahead of us, you can see, is lagging with some really poor connection. So I'm really wary of getting close to him. The Williams just went... <laughs> The Williams just goes for the, um, the the approach of, oh, you're lagging. Let's just get you out of the way. Little love tap sends him to the Shadow Realm, and we're done. Maybe you can say hi to Super GT for me over there. But now we're still battling this Williams, who's a bit of a thorn in my side at the moment. We've got more problems because watch the Alfa Romeo in the mirrors. Of course he sends his nose in down the inside. What a nuisance. What a nuisance. Bagel oven. I, I always preferred paninis, to be honest. Okay, ha have a day off. But it's Alfa Romeo. Unfortunately, does not get the message. He's still there on the inside looking to get the overtake done. Get some screen time where he can prop up his bagel propaganda. As he's ghosting now, so I'm not even sure what his connection's saying. As we now tentatively tuck in behind with DRS. He's unfortunately got DRS as well. He's charging his battery. So are we, as we're going to try and save it for later in the lap. Is the another Williams has its fate met at turn one. We now re-overtake the Alfa Romeo with DRS. And look ahead of us. Three wide uh, four-car battle going on. The Alpine's going to get squeezed out. The Williams, who overtook us earlier in the race, now maybe forging a path for us. But it's the last half of the Grand Prix. We're only in P6. Can we get the Alpine maybe into the final two corners? The Alpine thinks about the move on the Williams. We don't have too much battery to use as we go through with a uh, interesting line, I must say, through the last sector. And and uh, my teammate has won the race, but we have come home pretty much where we were. P6, once again, not the race win we're looking for, and we go again. Now in the Alpha Tauri at their home race at the Imola GP, and uh, well, I, we're in the Alpha Tauri, so let's hope we have some ghosting skills of our own as we're starting down in P18. Very difficult stuff here at Imola to expect a win from here, but we're going to try our best, and there's absolute carnage. We get tapped on the rear. There's two cars off in the gravel. There's three cars ghosting, and somehow we get through World War three there up into p9 maybe p8 as we tentatively go through the left and then the right there's cars on the left cars on the right those two have just cut the corner to get across ahead of us and we've ended up in p6 p18 to p6 in pretty much one sector we do the mclaren but he's going to come back at his captain captain in the ferrari absolutely not steering that ship in the right direction and then we get punted by a lemon we're on to race four now at sao paulo the brazil Brazilian Grand Prix in the Aston P6. So again, like at Austria, this is a good opportunity. We're nice and high on the randomized grid. There are a couple of cars ahead of us lagging. We're going to take it easy on the inside. We get, again, hit by a Red Bull. There appears just to be some beef going on in general in this lobby with all the people in Red Bulls as we get a warning for collision. We've come out somehow unscathed, actually, in P5. It could have been a lot worse, but then we get sent by the second Red Bull. Gets to the inside, and to be fair to him, defends very well as we have to just stick behind for P6. So right now, not looking that great we've not really gained much but we've not lost anything so we're still maybe within a shout of p1 because you just never know what crazy stuff's going to happen in the lead but now a has annoyingly comes through on the inside he's got a three second penalty so he's got nothing to lose he's on the inside we go to the inside of him little tap he gets tapped by the red bull and just comes into my front and i get a two second penalty okay okay the red bull span him into me what else where was i gonna go fia where was i gonna go anyway we move on we've got a two second penalty now so it's gonna be slim pickings maybe to be winning this race unless we can have a world oh my god there's more aliens on this game the Alpine, <laughs> he literally, he teleported to a different circuit, I think. Where is he gone? We don't have time, though, to worry about the well-being of the Alpine. We've got some moves to make DRS available. Now we're lap three to get the red ball back. That got us on at lap one as we get back into the P5. Our teammates ahead of us and our fancy him. So we're going to go push on and chase after our teammate to get up into P4. Lap four, DRS again. And look at the speed we gain here. 
Oh my god. On equal car performance, that DRS game with a bit of battery use is unreal. Purple first sector because of it, and we go around the outside for a nice move into the top four, but we're not really too close to the podium. Neither P1, who's absolutely checked out of this race, and so we're going to end this fourth race in P4. The Mercedes wins it. That's not a win, and we roll on again. The Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka from P13 in the Williams. Big Duracell sponsor on the halo. Let's hope that can juice me up into P1 as we get a good start versus our teammate on the right. The Alpine, a little bit questionable. I really wasn't sure I was going to get this overtake done, but we dive down the inside. Little love tap on the Haas. Apologies, but I had to try and get to the inside as the Ferrari has an absolute nightmare like the one I had in Austria and hits the grass as we go round the outside of the Haas, or at least try to. Red Bull's absolutely had a mare on the exit there, but I tried to go round the outside of the Haas, but the Haas had other ideas. He simply did not want to give up the position there, so we have to now try and re-overtake him, but we've, we've worked well here. We've gone from, what, P14 to P6 with a lot of the big hitters out of this race. The Red Bulls, they've span out one of the Ferraris, and now we're going to get this Haas, who gets it all crossed up on the exit, up into P7 now, looking to maybe make the move on an Aston Martin next up, but on this exit, I mean, I don't know what that exit was. I, it felt like I was playing F122 for a moment there on the exit, so the Haas re-overtakes me. I'm sure at this point he was probably a bit smirk and a bit smug about re-overtaking me after I had to get him, you know, to, well, try to attempt to overtake him twice and lost the position now, so we're going to have to go through spoon curves to re-overtake the Haas for a third time now in this race. I really hope this is not the reason I can't progress further into this race because look at the minimap. P1 is just down the road. We actually have a good chance around here and I actually fancy myself around Suzuka. It seems to be one of my better circuits uh, in this early kind of, you know, first two weeks of playing the game. So, I just need to get in a bit of a rhythm, especially in Sector 1. I think I'm pretty mighty, so we just need to get the run on the Haas. Apparently, that was a clean lap. Okay, was that lap being adjudicated by Stevie Wonder? Probably, but we're going to continue on. We've made the move on the Haas, and now we're going to open up the taps in Sector 1. And we are flying with the purple sector, catching up to the Aston Martin now, who's also fancying a move on our good old friend, Bagel Oven, in the Ferrari. So it looks like his bakery has been upgraded from Alfa Romeo to Ferrari. He's ghosting about a bit, lagging, not great. The Aston Martin just has some misshapen exit. I don't know if that was lag or not. We can't, it's hard to tell in this game, to be honest, but we're up into P6 on lap three. Oh my! Travesty for an Aston and Merck. There's been an absolute coming together as we go up the hill into sector two. We're all of a sudden up into P4 and on the second last lap of the Grand Prix, we can see the top three ahead of us. We can see P1 in our midst. This might be the race that we can do this. Now, we're not deploying on purpose purpose to save our battery. Same thing with the Ferrari and the Mercedes as the Merc is overtaken by the Red Bull as he gets into P1. We send it on the inside of both of them. A little bit cheeky on the Merc, but he's going to stay ahead and the Red Bull and the Merc are going to come together. We've got the Ferrari, but now it's time for the double move. We're oh so close to the wall. We commit to the inside. Had massive faith in the Mercedes that he wasn't going to squeeze me into the wall and give me some room to work with. We had the double overtake for P1. It is all looking rather rosy. Looking to stretch my legs in sector one where we've been strong all race and we're gaining about three to four tenths alone in this section on the people behind us. But then... Oh my god. That is officially what you call code brown in the cockpit. My god, I'm just glad we kept it going in a straight line. But have I just bottled this bigger than Ben Daly on the last lap of this race? The Mercedes is in the lead, but look at his rain light. It's blinking, so he's harvesting. He doesn't have that much ERS, and I have a good amount. I've saved it on purpose for this last lap, and we're going to need it to try and come back at him and win this race. 
race and this video can actually end. I can get off F1 for the day as the Mercedes goes wide. We put the nose in. He has to give us a bit of room and he invites us in by going wide. We're neck and neck banging tyres and we're going to be neck and neck all the way through to 130R. He's still there on the outside, still there. We stay side by side for the entire time. We swap it to the inside, break a bit late, try and take him wide, get the elbows out. The Merc stays committed to our rear end all the way through down the hill. He's literally nose to tail, pulls across, and the race is going to end by 0.083. Unreal stuff. But that is a race win on F1 23 online. And this video can end. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. And I'll see you guys. Bye.